Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, the King of Kings. Thank you, the Ancient of Days, the God of Glory, the God who answered the prayers of His children. We have come once more to your presence. May you be in charge of this prayer. May you touch each and every one of us, O oh God. May your spirit be here to direct us, O oh God. Remove every human element in the lives of your children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, Madam. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends, today we are on a journey with Jesus through the stations of the cross. But our Blessed Mother wants to share with us how the suffering of Jesus became her own story. So we are going to join Mary for a reflection on the stations of the cross. It is very normal and traditional to focus on Jesus as we go through the session of the cross. But our Blessed Mother wants to help us to focus on Him by in getting us involved in how the story was unfolding that day. To see what was going on in her own heart. Because remember, she was human. And all that was going on meant a lot to her life. Jesus was not a stranger to her life. This was her son, her only son. So she invites us for a reflection on the stations of the cross. As she guides us through the stations of the cross uh, through her own eyes. Through her own eyes. She wants us to see the suffering of Jesus through her own eyes. How was the eyes of Mary seeing the, the troubles, the, the passion of Christ? And being a lovely mother, she wants to help us to also see uh, through her own eyes the unfolding stories of her son in our own passion, in our own story, in our own suffering. Praise the Lord. So as we go through this story, we are going to put all our minds in the situation. We are going to understand that our Blessed Mother, being a mother and a loving mother for that matter, she knows, she knows how to help us to go through the suffering and offer the suffering to her son and at the end to be with her son. Everything is meant to bring glory to her son. And she wants to help us to be able to experience the pain of her son in our lives. All these and many more we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. I will not forget Calvary, oh Calvary, 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 I will not forget Calvary, Mother go with us. We cannot go no more go with us. We cannot go no The road is narrow, a full of many dangers. More go with us. We cannot go no Martha, go with us. We cannot go alone. Martha, go with us. We 
Indeed, Mother is here to go with us on this journey. She went with Jesus. She did not leave Jesus alone when troubles came. She would not leave us alone when life brings a storm. And so we should know that we have a mother that is caring. A mother that wants us to succeed in the journey that unfolds every day. And she was part of the story of Jesus. She is much available to be part of our story. And so as we go through the station of the cross, it is appropriate not only to see that Jesus is the one we are following, but to see beside us, beside us, the voice of a mother who is encouraging us to follow her son, Jesus. Who is telling us that, look, as you follow my Jesus, you will be with him. She's a mother. She's taking us on this journey with us. And we shall not be put to shame. Could it be said that she's coming to your family tonight with Jesus? Sure. Could it be said tonight that she's going to visit you with her son today? Sure. Our mother is here. She's here for you. For all of us. For her children. She wears a mantle that covers her children. And so, my dear friends, what a great joy, what a confidence we have in our Blessed Mother. A joy that she is always there to see us through, to take away the troubles, and to encourage us when troubles have to persevere, to have to a stand because God may have given up that trouble a time limit and you are already struggling to make it mother will help you may we put our trust in Jesus as Mary holds our hand on this journey in Jesus name Amen I will follow you anywhere you go. I will follow you anywhere you go. In the day, in the day, in the night, in the night, I will follow Jesus anywhere he goes. I will follow you everywhere you go. I will follow you anywhere you go. In my tears, in my tears, in my pain every time, I will follow Mary anywhere she goes. Amen. The fourth session. Jesus is condemned to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross, thou have redeemed the world. But our friends, Mother will be talking to us in all this journey. 
as she invites us to see through her eyes the story of her son. My son, listen. My daughters, my children, listen. I have a story to share with you. A story of your salvation. A story of my son's suffering. It was also my own story. The story of my suffering. I am your sorrowful mother. In this station, my son stood before Pilate as an innocent man. Throughout his life, he entered more and more deeply into the condition of the people he came to save. It was not enough that he was born a human, a human. But he went further to carry the troubles of humanity. As my son was growing up, people were judging him. As he was growing up, there were judgments against my son. I have taught my son how to continue to look unto the Father. Even when he began his public ministry, the religious leaders didn't accept him. His reflection of God didn't fit their self-serving picture of God. So, they judged him. His own followers abandoned him. When the chiefs were down, in the night of suffering, Right there in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Judas, who rejected him, took the people to condemn him, to arrest him, they treated my son like a criminal. I was not there that day in the Gethsemane, but I was feeling the pains in my heart. Hell. I never forgot the blood he shed and the pain he experienced at the hands of the Roman guards who came to arrest him. My son began his journey by becoming one with every powerless person. Every person mocked. Every person made fun of by others. He became part of such people. He came to redeem them. Don't forget, my son did nothing that deserved capital punishment or the abuse he was given. But he endured all things. He kept saying yes even when he was with me in the house, he was always saying yes. His yes was a total surrender to God's will. His yes ultimately destroyed the power of sin and death. My children, I want my own children 
to learn how to say yes like Jesus. I want my children to learn how to allow the will of God to be done. My son, Jesus, allowed the will of God to be done in his own life. I told him many times how I had been graced to say, let it be done according to your word. And the time came when he lived my life, my word to him. Let it be done according to your word. And even in the midst of his suffering, he allowed the will of his father in heaven to be done. When the sword came, when the trials came, when the storm came, it was not easy for him. But he allowed the will of his father to be done. It was not my will, but the will of the Father that he allowed to be done. To watch my son say yes to God so completely and fully for the salvation of the world was something pleasing to my heart. But that was also a sword to my heart, for he had to suffer. To have the will of the Father come to pass. They condemned my son to death. Now that he is condemned to death, reflect with me on each station of this journey. My people of God, my children, many of you are going through trials. Many of you have been condemned by the enemies. But do not lose courage. Allow the will of God to be done. Talk to my son. And I'm here to help you. Invite me to talk to him. I have given you the rosary. To use it to call on me, to ring, to give me a ring, give me a phone call. You call your earthly mothers, don't you? How often do you call your heavenly mother to come to your aid? To talk to Jesus on your behalf. I want to see you succeed. Don't forget, I am your heavenly mother. My blessed mother, we thank you for praying for us. We thank you for all the sacrifices you make to bring us your son. Even when we reject you, you still love us. And when we come to you, you still don't turn your back on us. You are full of grace. Grant on us the grace to be with your son. The grace to follow your son. The grace to listen to him, said the mother. Grant us the, help us to obtain the grace to fully understand what he wants and to do what he wants. You are a great gift to the church and to your children. Help us, Blessed Mother, to be your true children, children like Jesus. These are many more we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The second station. Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross thou have redeemed the world. 
my son was forced to carry the cross. This was the cross on which he would be nailed, ridiculed, and executed. We must pause here to remember what this represents, what the cross represents. For this journey, my son takes up the weight of all of the cross of humanity. He took up all of our senselessness, our suffering, our pains, the pains of humanity. He took up the weight of all of the sin in the world. Yes, all the past sins, or all the present and the future sins, he took all. Each step he took cut deeply into his already battered shoulders. My children, the, the weight of the cross was heavy on my son. But he did not reject the cross. He knew that on this cross he would die. But on this cross he would be nailed. He knew that this would be a shame. But he took the cross. I have always known that my son is strong. I haven't seen him fall except when he was a small boy. And when he was staggering to walk, many a time he would fall. Couldn't believe that he would manage even a few steps to carry the cross because the cross was heavy. There was nothing I could do than to keep praying. For I understand that he was fulfilling his destiny. And only by well suffering will that purpose be fulfilled. In every station, in every passion of my son, in each of his suffering, I always remember when I took him as a little boy to the temple and to present him to Simeon. And the prophecy of Simeon continues to ring in my heart. But the lands that pierce the heart of this child would also pierce your own heart. And indeed, in each of his suffering, in each of the rejection, in every knell, in every ridicule, in every jeer the rejection of people, always remember that prophecy. I did not say a word because I understand that this is the way that heaven has given to my son. My dear children, when you look back in your life, what do you see? Do you see where you have carried the cross? Do you see where you dropped the cross? Do you see where you are contemplating whether to carry the cross or not? In each of these episodes, the will of my son is that you carry the cross. I carried mine. I was never a stranger to the cross. The weight of the cross, the physical cross, was on the shoulders of my son. 
But I was also carrying the cross with him. For I was also in pain. So when you carry your cross, then you are part of my son's ministry. Because I carried my own cross and was with him and walking with him, praying for him, supporting him as a mother, I always supported him in his ministry. And even in his suffering, I was always there. And even on the cross, I was there. Even when he was buried, I was there. I was never a stranger to the life of my son. And when you carry the cross, you become part of bearing the cross of my son. My own children. My son is calling you all to follow the way of the cross. I am also speaking to you all the word of my son to listen to him and follow the way of the cross. I have always told you, listen to what he says. Imagine each step that my son takes in this journey. Can you pause and reflect each step, what that means? It is a step to bring us to a place of glory. It's a step that brings us to salvation. The step of, your, of my son. Each step towards Calvary is a step closer to your salvation. And what would you say? What would you say when you see each step of my son? You should say thank you. A thank you that comes from the heart. Because it is each step of His that brings you closer to your victory. Blessed Mother, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for encouraging us to carry the cross. We thank you for speaking to us when we are losing courage. Even when we become battered or rejected, you continue to encourage us. Blessed Mother, many mothers are crying. The cross in the family is so heavy. Mama, pray for them. That they shall find strength in your son. Many men are crying because of what they are seeing in their families. Strengthen them, O Blessed Mother. Most of your children are sick. Emotionally, physically, and in many other ways, Blessed Mother, they come to you today. Touch them. Touch your people.
Since you are full of grace, pray for us, O oh Blessed Mother, that we shall experience grace to carry this cross and follow your Son. No matter how difficult it might be. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed the fruit of your name, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus knows the way to the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow Him. I said, you know the way to the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow Him. I said, you know the way to the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow Him. Amen. The third station. Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross, thou hast redeemed the world. Dear friends, mother has seen her son fall for the first time. I can barely express to you, my children, how I felt to see my son fall for the first time. Fall of my son was a painful sight for me. I mean, I, I could barely express to you what it was like to see my son fall under the weight of that cross. Everything within me wanted to make them stop. Yes. This was too much for him to bear. It was too much for me to see. But there was nothing I could do. But to watch him lay on the ground. Like a libation wine poured on the ground. Of course, I now know what you are going through when you see your children fall. Maybe they lose their jobs. Maybe they have miscarriage. Maybe they lose their promotions. Maybe they fall into sickness. I can understand how you feel. But could you imagine how I felt? That my son was on the way to death. Think about it. I now know that if he was to enter completely into our, our lives, he would have to surrender to the crushing weight of the bodies. So many in their world suffer. I know that. That if you would have to bring salvation to mankind, you would have to surrender to the crushing weight of, of the bodies of mankind. He would have to stoop low into the this, this suffering humanity in order to redeem the suffering humanity. All 
the people of the earth who are overcome by unfair burdens will always know that laying there on the ground, Jesus knew and will always understand their powerlessness. Unable to get himself up, he entered into and forever understands our fatigue, our weaknesses. And whatever unfairly treatments that we get in life, he understands. My son understands when you fall into sickness. Or when you fall into injustice. He understands. Even when you are defeated, he understands the pains of defeat. He understands our sorrow. But I, your mother, also understand your sorrow. Yes, I understand your sorrow. I understand the feeling of guilt at reflecting upon my son's way to Calvary. But this night, when I look back on that diet, on that day that he carried the cross, I have joy that my son indeed carried the cross, that he indeed made that sacrifice. I am happy. For I see you, my children, benefiting from his sacrifice. So be grateful. My son simply wants you to remember how he loved you then as to choose the path that all people rejected and even to die on the cross. He wants you, my children, to know that he, he loves you. Then and now. He has never changed. It is all about mercy. We have life only when we are in Him. My children, I have told you that this is all about His mercy. I also want to tell you that is all about the gift of life that he gives. And the grace to live that life that he offers. My children, when you fall, look unto my son. Call on me with the rosary that I gave to you. And I will come to help you. I will help you. I will talk to my son. As a loving mother, I will come to where you are falling. And I will help you to get up. Is there any mother who will see her son fall and they do not care? Of course no. Why would you think that I will see you fall and will not care? I want to see you stand strong on the shoulders of my son. Blessed Mother, we thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for helping us to see beyond the fall. To see the, the hand your, your mighty hand, your loving hand, lifting us up and giving us to your son. Thank you for helping us when the burdens of life is weighing us down. You have never given up talking to your son about your children. Even when we are crushed. Even when we, refer, we re, receive unfair treatments. 
you have always been there. Holy Mother, help us to surrender to your son wholeheartedly. Your son surrendered to his father and took up the crushing weight of, of the cross. Teach us how to surrender to your son. How to surrender ourselves to each other. Blessed Mother. You are the mother of mercy. Help us to do the will of your son. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And that brings us to the fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross, thou have redeemed the world. My dear children of God, our blessed mother, in the course of this suffering, saw all that happened to her son. Nobody told her this story. She saw the whole pains. She saw the whole rejection. And Mary wants to talk to us. She wants to share with us the story of how the suffering of her son was seen through her own eyes. As I pushed and shoved to move through the crowds to be as close as my son as I could, we came to a place in the road where he stopped. It was a huge crowd that we are jeering, crucify him, crucify him. Could you imagine, my children, how those words were hitting my heart? Because these were the people that my son healed their children. He raised their dead ones back to life. But now, they are rejecting him. Few days ago, it was glory. They were lifting up their palm leaves and celebrating my son. Now, they are demanding for his, for his destruction. The crowd was so much that I could not see my son. All I could see was the crowd. But I did not come for the crowd. I was looking for my son. I pushed into the crowd. Yes, you hear me very well. I showed to move through the crowd. Yes, you hear me very well. I did all these not to such as to be close to my son as I could. And behold, I saw him. I saw his eyes swollen. I saw his face swollen. I saw blood all over his body. I saw wounds all over his body. This was not the son I gave to the world. The world had disfigured my son. Injustice had disfigured my son. 
Many of you, my children, cry that the world has disfigured your children or your destiny or your career. I can understand your situations. And I'm very much available to help you to experience a change in situation as I go to talk to my son about you. My son sees me and he listens to me. My son, when he saw me in the crowd, he stopped. And he looked into my eyes. I looked into his eyes. I didn't want him to see my tears. Because I wanted to be a strong mom for him. I didn't want him to know my pains. But I long ago accepted how thoroughly he knew me. The love from my heart poured out in the only embrace. I could give him all that I have. And that was my love. The love from my heart poured out is the only embrace I could give him. My lips Quietly said the prayer he taught us. Our Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What else would I do than to pray for my son? He know that. He know that. The world did not hear that prayer. It was a prayer of the heart that my son heard and nodded. It meant a lot for him. He nodded so silently, so slightly, took a deep breath and moved on to the hill. My prayer was an encouragement to him. My children, do you come to me to pray for you? How often do you take up your rosary to pray? To talk to your mom? To discuss situations with your mom? In this episode, I recall the prophecy of Simeon again. The sword passing through my heart had blessed his mission. And I knew he knew it. The sword that pierced him pierced me. Think of the suffering of my son. And think of how I was praying for him. My daughters, how do you raise the children I give to you? My sons, how do you raise the children I give to you? When things are not going the way you expected, do you pray? How do you handle your spouse? Do you pray for him? <sighs> My children, you must every day Thank my son for taking this way on your behalf. Thank him with me, even now, that he took up that mission for us. Thank him that he has tested the separation and loss that every person in the world knows who has lost a loved one. He 
If you have lost a loved one, you know how painful it is. I have lost a loved one. Jesus, my old son. My son understands the heart of every loving mother. When you are grieving for your suffering children, my son understands that we become so completely one with us that in our suffering, he comes to suffer with us. He comes to help us. <sighs> my children, let your faith never wane down. I keep trusting my son. Blessed mother, thank you for being with us. Thank you for always praying for us in this fourth station. You met your suffering son. You saw him. May you see your suffering children in the humanity. And may you visit each and every one of your suffering children. Many have been separated from the life of your son. Holy Mother, teach us how to go back to your son. For we cannot have life without him. Blessed Mother, for those who have lost their loved ones, may your prayers strengthen them. Thank you, Blessed Mother. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst men. And blessed the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The fifth station. Simon helps Jesus to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by thy holy cross thou have redeemed the world. Now, my children, you hear that Simon helped my son, Jesus, to carry his cross. I want you to listen. I want you to reflect even now with me on what it must have been to see my son so exhausted that he could hardly carry the cross. Think. Think. You think that Simon just came to help him? Simon never knew what was going on. He was going after his own business. But when the executioner saw that Jesus, my son, was about to expire, they began to fear that he might die before getting to the Calvary. So they listed a passerby, Simon, a stranger, to help my son. Reflect with me on what it must have been like for my son to simply not be able to carry the son, uh, the cross any further alone. All this time, he had been carrying the cross alone. Now, it became too difficult for him. Too difficult. I wanted to go and help him. I wanted to carry the cross. I wanted to relieve him. I wanted to be the one to carry the cross.
that heaven did not give approval, he must carry the cross. I thought he would die. I was so relieved that he was getting help at the time, even though my heart went out to Simon, who was drawn into Jesus' journey. Simon got into the life of my son, the life of the cross. Children, I want to let you know that my son has a ministry. I am part of that ministry. The ministry for the salvation of souls. Each time you help my son, each time you help him to carry the cross, to make the will of the Father to come true, to make the will of heaven to take place, you are Simon. When you are helping my son in his ministry, you are Simon. When you have made yourself available to work as an instrument to bring the love of my son into those suffering, your name is Simon. My children, when we look back, we see how my son has been helping humanity. Without him, humanity would have fallen apart and broken apart. My children, you must give thanks to God for sending my son. You must give thanks that my son entered into your life, into the life of humanity. Even in this gesture of help, he entered into the suffering humanity. My son came to know the experience of all the suffering children of God. But those children of God must depend on each other. When my son allowed Simon to help him to carry the cross, my son is using the opportunity to teach you, my children, to depend upon each other. Jesus came to know the experience of all of you, all of us, who must depend upon others, who can't make it alone. Even in this final journey, my son would not even have the satisfaction of being able to do this on his own. Yes, he was strong, but now he needed human help. Pause and think about it. If the king of kings, the creator of the whole world, would need the help of a human being that he created, would that not suffice to be a teaching for my people that life is not meant to be lived alone. When you are struggling, my son wants to be there to help you. I always talk to him about you. Now, what is in your heart, my children? I want to carry your petitions to my son. Present them now. Present the petitions. This is a moment to bring petitions to your mother. Your mother wants to carry these petitions to her son. Whatever is in your heart, whatever is the difficulty, whatever is the pain, 
talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. I will carry them to Jesus. I did it in John chapter 2. When the wine finished, I went to Jesus. I'm not the one that does the miracles. I go to my son. And my son dispenses his power. When miracles are done through me, it is because of the power of my son invested upon me. But I am not the source of that power. My son is. Maybe I may have to remind you what happens when the, my priests are celebrating Mass. The bread turns to body of, of my son. The wine turns to the blood of my son. But the power for that change, for that transformation of bread to body is not of the priest. It came from Jesus, my son. That is the power of my son acting through the priest. It does not make the priest to have power of his own. When miracles are dispensed through my hands, when graces are received through my hands, it follows the same explanation. That the power of my son invested upon me is released bring change of situations come to me my children and I will help you I will help you to carry your cross <sighs> blessed mother we just cannot thank you enough that you are part of our journey You gave the world your son. The world rejected your son. Killed your son. Yet you continue to fix souls in the world. You did not reject the people that have rejected your son. You did not reject us for rejecting your son. You continued to love like your son. Help us, blessed mother, to be like Simon, helping your son in, in his ministry. Help us to give thanks to your son and to give a life of thanksgiving. Help us, O oh blessed mother, to experience the power of unity, the power of working together, the power of depending on each other. Holy Mother, we thank you for carrying our petitions to your son. We appreciate you, Blessed Mother. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The sixth station. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross, thou have redeemed the world. Hell. I have always known my son. I gave birth to him. I mean, is there any mother who does not know her son? I know my son. I know my son. I've always seen his face. 
He was a handsome son. But when my son went through all the troubles, I cannot describe his face for you to understand. Injustice disfigured the face of my son. His face was covered with blood and sweat. His body was covered with bruises and the wounds. So many parts of his body swollen, even his face swollen from the beatings. As a mother, it was a bitter pill for me to swallow. As a mother, I can hardly tell you that there was even spit on his face. Do I count one spit or set or two or three? My meaningless to talk about spit at this time. People were spitting on the face of my son before my face. And I was helpless. I couldn't defend my son. He was abused. He suffered violence. I have never known violence in my family. My marriage was violent free. My family was violent free. It was a holy family. But the world brought violence to the life of my son. But there is a good news. My son will always turn every evil to good. His face, which had become the face of rejection, the face of abuse or the face of violence, has become the face in solidarity with all who have ever experienced abuse and violence. Then out of the crowd came a woman whose compassion for my son was so great that she pushed past the Roman soldiers and they wiped his face with his veil. Oh, how I loved her. How, how I was comforted. I, I thought that everyone was against my son. But at least I saw a soul. I came to identify with the suffering of my son. May God bless Veronica. Oh. When Veronica wiped the face of my son, my son was brightened up. He looked at Veronica. The look between them touched me deeply. It was a look of love. That is the same look my son uses when you wipe his face in the suffering humanity. The face of my son now has been cleansed. His clean face for a moment revealed the loving face of the son that I have always known. 
because of the wiping of the face of my son that have been battered by suffering and injustice and persecution. He could hardly be known. But now, this woman helped me to see the face of my son again. The loving face of my son. I know my son. I know my son. Who is the Veronica of our time? Where is the Veronica of this generation? I'm looking for them. The Veronica has to wipe the face of my son in the suffering of humanity, in the suffering villages, in the suffering widows and those who are homeless. The suffering where folks don't know what tomorrow will bring and no food to eat. And I'm looking for the Veronicas of our time to be the hand to feed the poor, the hungry, to be the hand to clothe the naked. And even to shelter the stranger. And even to visit uh, the imprisoned. When I see such Veronica, I become their own Veronica. I also wipe their tears. I wipe their faces. My children. You don't need to be a mother to understand how I felt seeing all these ugly events unfolding in the life of my own son. But thanks be to heaven that Veronica was there to comfort me. As my son smiled at Veronica, and continued on his journey. Those of us nearby looked at her, looked at her veil. Oh, and we saw the gift that my son gave to her. Not the gift of currency of the human world, but the gift of the divine, of the heavenly currency. With the face of my son. My own people, my children, when you do the work of my son, when you wipe the face of my son, he gives you a reward. Uh, there, on Veronica's veil, was a stunning likeness, a true icon of the cost of his sacrifice and the depth of his solidarity with all who suffer. This image, the image of my son, the image of his suffering face, that image is his gift to all of us forever. This is a gift that he has given to us to contemplate, not just sometimes, but to contemplate always. To contemplate. To always contemplate his likeness, his union with us in our worst rejection and the suffering. Do you hear that? I 
as you remember with me how his face was. So I also encourage you, my children, to also know that as you wipe his face, you will see how his face is. A battered face can become a face of glory, a face of beauty. Maybe your face now is ugly. Maybe you have been disfigured by, by circumstances of life. And one day your face will be beautiful, my children. As you remember with me how his face was so covered with punishment and violence. Let us give thanks for his solidarity with us. In every aspect of our lives, my son has never left this broken humanity unattended to. So my children, learn to give thanks to my son for his solidarity, solidarity with this world in every aspect of the lives of his people. Blessed Mother, we are just speechless as you have taken us on a class, on a lecture, on Veronica wiping the face of your son. Hmm. Thank you for explaining how your son's face was bruised and disfigured by suffering. Suffering incurred in the hands of the people you came to save. But as a mother, you endured all this, and you kept praying. So you have always been praying for us, even when by saying, we bruise your son, we beat your son, we scourge your son, we abuse your son, we even bring violence to him. Yet, you have never despised us. You continue to pray. You continue to love. Mama, help us to have your heart, your kind of heart, the heart of love. Mama, you promised to be a Veronica to those who have become the Veronica of your son. To wipe the faces of those who wipe the faces of your son in the broken humanity. Make us candidates of such divine benevolence. Touch your children, Mama. Touch your children. Many are crying. Many are trying to be a good wife that their husband or children are not even seeing it. With all the sacrifices that have been made. Many of your sons are trying to be the best husband or father. But they are not, they are, their love has not been seen or appreciated. Blessed Mother, we ask you to strengthen such your children. Many marriages are going through abuse and violence. Just like your son encountered abuse and violence 
not in your family, but outside your family, in the hands of the people you came to save. Blessed Mother, pray for us. Wipe the faces of your children that are crying. Mama, we are talking to you. Do something about the situation of your children. With this, your beautiful veil that you have always used to cover your head, use it to cover your children. Even with this, your mantle, use it to cover your children. When we gather under your mantle, we form a church, a true church. A true church. You begin to murder us because you are the mother of the church. Blessed Mother. Reveal to us your son, the more. Your son revealed his face to Veronica on a veil. Reveal your son to us. Beholding him is an experience that your children desire. Give us your beautiful smile again, O oh, our Queen. Journey into our lives, into our families. Walk into our families, O oh Blessed Mother. Make us to be true likeness of your son. To be true icons of your son. Help us, Blessed Mother. To always contemplate the likeness of your son. To, to, to appreciate him. Never to reject him. But to be his own disciple, true disciples. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will not earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from our evil. Amen. The seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise thee. Because by the Holy Cross, God have redeemed the world. When my son fell the second time, my heart sank as he seemed so weak, as he seemed to just lose control and they stumble and they crumble to the ground. The way he fell to his knees on the hard stones. I could feel the jarring pain through my whole body. Helpless to help him, I again wondered if he could make it. Oh. As I look back with you today, Imagine that this fall placed him together with people with disabilities. With the people suffering from all kinds of physical diseases that weaken them. And with all who are aging and must confront the limits of their bodies. My prayer is that all God's people who know the suffering of these disabilities might know that they can always turn to my son for understanding 
and for comfort. With the gratitude in our hearts, we take a few moments to find the words to express our feelings to Him. What do you think, my church, my dear friends in Christ? Hearing what Mary is going through and seeing the pains and sufferings of her son. Our Blessed Mother, we thank you that even this second fall, you continue to encourage us in our own fall. Sometimes we fall so helplessly. Sometimes we incur some wounds. The wounds due to sin. But blessed mother, you are the mother of sinners. You have always loved us and you will never abandon us. We are bringing people who are suffering some sorts of disabilities maybe due to physical disabilities, physical diseases, or due to age, we bring such children of yours that you may lead them to your son. People in homes with aged people. Mama, touch your children. Touch your children. Pray for us, O oh Blessed Mother, that all God's people who know the suffering of these disabilities may know that they can always turn to your Son for understanding and for comfort. Help us, Blessed Mother. We cannot do without your help. With the gratitude in our hearts, O Blessed Mother, we come to you today to ask you to help us to appreciate all that your son has done for your children. Without him, we are spiritually disabled. We become blind. That's a disability. We become lame. That's a disability. Without him, we become incapacitated, vulnerable. We become vegetable without him. I will ask you, Blessed Mother, in this troubling time, when plague is harassing everywhere in the world, but not every person, because plague has no room in the lives of your children, we ask you to continue to murder your children, continue to intercede for your children. Come to our aid. Come to our aid. Many of us carry so many pains in the heart. We laugh and people think it's all well. You know, inside, there's this steam that is boiling. There is unrestlessness that is going on. There are pains. There are some wounds that are being carried. Many times we don't know who to talk to. But we know we have a mother that understands the pains of her children. Help us to see a change of situation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed the fruit of you in Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Amen.